In a previous video, I simplified expressions using the reciprocal trig ratios, but what if you have a bit more complicated ones like this one? Um, so there's a lot going on here, and it, it might require a bit of trial and error, which is something that you should um, be accustomed to or get used to when you're doing trigonometric ratios, and especially when you're dealing with identities. Um, you'll be doing a lot of trial and error until you're able to know the tricks and bits um, around solving um, all of these, um, whether it's simplifying, whether it's solving, um, you'll have to know the tricks behind it. So it's with practice, it's with seeing a lot of examples that you'll get used to it, so don't worry. Um, I know even I had to go at this twice before um, figuring out the trick. So um, looking at this, um, it might seem tempting to immediately expand the denominator, substitute the um, one of the identities we have here. But that's a bit getting ahead of ourselves. Let's just take it one at a time and just substitute the identity first. So this will give us 2 tan theta um, plus tan square theta plus 1 over the same denominator. Now, Usually, we would like to avoid to expand this. Um, sometimes when they leave you an expression to the power of something, most of the times this expression will cancel out, so you don't need to expand out. Um, so let's not expand out, see how it goes. I do admit I did expand out in my first attempt just to see where this was going to go. And because I did it in my first attempt, I was able to figure out the trick later on. So. Um, Next, the only thing, well, there's no other ratio I could use here, but as an identity I could use here, but there's something with sine, cos, I can't change them to tan, but I can change tan to these. So let me replace these with the, si the identity. So I know that tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. So let me just substitute that in. Now the two here will belong to the sine because it will go to the numerator. So sine theta over cos theta and then I have a squared so sine squared theta over cos squared theta and then I have my plus one. Now this whole thing is being divided by this and I'd rather not make my fraction too complicated so I'm just gonna say that this whole thing is being divided by sine theta plus cos theta so this is just a personal preference. Um, then what I'm going to do is, well, I have some things in cost. Let me see if I can simplify this expression. So the most basic thing you want to do is make the denominator the same. So if I want to make the denominator the same, I'll have to multiply this by um, cos theta by cos theta times cos theta, um, this over 1, so this times cos theta. Sorry, this will be squared because the denominator has to be cos theta, cos squared theta. Um, again, with trial and error, with looking at this a couple of times, with realizing, okay, maybe this is going to work, let me make the denominator the same. So then you end up with 2 sine theta, cos theta here. This will not change. Then I have cos squared theta over cos squared theta. This I can change to the how we multiply fractions, so divide fractions, so this is multiplied by 1 over sin theta plus cos theta squared. Now, it might take you a while and it might take a bit of playing around, maybe expanding on this to see, but this is actually a, um, a perfect square expansion of sine squared and cos squared. Now a perfect square is something like if I have a plus b squared, I don't need to do the whole two brackets, multiply out. This will be the first one squared, the second one squared, you take the sine of the middle, you take two, and then you multiply these two together, a, b. That's it. And this is what happens happened here. We have a sine squared, we have a cos squared, and then we have double of these two without the squared. So 
sine squared cos squared double of the sine and cos, which means that um, take which means that I, t I look at the square items and I just take the the values. This is a very like crash course on how to deal with um, perfect square. So you can look into more detail regarding this. So this will be sine squared plus cos theta, um, and then, uh, sorry, sine theta plus cos theta squared over cos squared theta, and lo and behold, this is basically what's in the denominator in the second fraction, which is why I said that when I expanded it out, it, it became a bit clearer. Obviously, I know that this is a, a, a perfect square, but in, for you, it might help. So this will cancel out with this, and so I'm left with 1 over cos squared theta, write it in simplest form, and that will be um, secant squared theta. So hopefully this was clear, just knowing the tricks um, here and there, simplifying it as much as possible, um, and just using as much algebra as you could.